second lecture we will study some applications of the principle of inclusion and exclusion. Now, first let us look at this example which is based on the sieve of Eratosthenes. Now, the Greek mathematician Eratosthenes developed a technique of listing all the prime numbers uh, between uh, 1 and any positive integer n. So, our goal is to list all the prime numbers between the number 1 and a positive integer n. The procedure is as follows. one remove all the multiples of two other than two. Keep the first remaining integer exceeding two. which is the prime number three. Third step remove all the multiples Three except three itself four keep the first. remaining integer exceeding 3 which will be the prime number 
then remove all the multiples of 5 except 5 we have to continue in this way. What happens is that if we take a positive integer n, let us say n equal to 1000. So, we are looking at positive integers from 1 to 1000 and if we keep on repeating this process then ultimately we will uh, we will be left with the prime uh, numbers between 1 to 1000 now our problem is derived from this uh, method which is called the sieve of Eratosthenes. Uh, so, let us look at the problem. Count the number of integers between 1 and 1000 which are not divisible by 2, 3, 5 and 7. In order to solve this problem, we consider certain sets. First, let u be the set of integers x such that 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1000. Now, we define some subsets of u a 1 equal to the set of elements of u divisible by 2 a 2 the set of elements of u divisible by 3 a 3 the set of elements of u divisible by 5 a 4 the set of elements 
of u divisible by 7. Now, we are looking at the set of integers between 1 and 1000 which are not divisible by 2, 3, 5 and 7. We have in the beginning constructed 4 sets uh, which are in fact subsets of u the integers between 1 and 1000 uh, namely a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4 where a 1 consists of all the elements which are divisible by 2, a 2 the set of elements divisible by 3, a 3 elements divisible by 5 and a 4 elements divisible by 7. Now, if we consider the set a 1 complement this is the set of all the elements in u which are not divisible by 2. A 2 complement is a set of all elements of u not divisible by 3. A 3 complement is a set of all elements of u not divisible by 5 and A 4 complement set of all elements of u not divisible by 7. Now, that means that our set under consideration is intersection of all these complements and this gives me the set of all elements in u which are not divisible by 2, 3, 5, 7. Now, we can process this a little further by considering this. Is in fact a 1 union, a 2 union, a 3 union, a 4. and the complement this is by using De Morgan's law. So, the cardinality of a 1 complement intersection a 2 complement intersection a 3 complement intersection a 4 complement is the cardinality of the complement of a 1 union a 2 union a 3 union a 4 which in turn is equal to the cardinality of u which is a universal set minus the cardinality of a 1 union a 2 union a 3 union a 4. Now, we will quickly calculate the cardinalities of a 1 a 2 a 3 a 4 and 
the cardinalities of a i a i's intersections of a i's taken two at a time, three at a time and all at a time and then use principle of inclusion and exclusion to get the cardinality of the union of a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4. So, we start our process by checking the cardinality of a 1 which is 1000 divided by 2, 500 a 2 which is floor of 1000 divided by 3 which is equal to 333. By the way floor of a uh, real number is the largest integer less than that real number. Then a 3 1000 divided by 5 which is 200 and a 4 which is the floor of 1000 divided by 7 which gives us 1 4 2. Then we take intersections of a i's uh, for distinct i taken two at a time. So, we get a 1 intersection a 2 is equal to floor of 1000 divided by 6 because if, if a positive integer is divisible by both 2 and 3 then of course, it is divisible by 6 and the converse. Therefore, we will have uh, 166 a 1 intersection a 3 this gives me 1000 divided by 10 which is 100 and a 1 intersection a 4 which is floor of 1000 divided by 14 which is equal to 71, then a 2 intersection a 3 a 2 intersection a 4 And lastly, a 3 intersection a 4 which is floor of 1000 divided by 35 which is equal to 28. Then we have to take the intersections taking 3 at a time. So, I will have a 1 intersection, a 2 intersection, a 3. So, these are precise with the elements which are divisible by 2, 3 and 5 therefore, uh, divisible by 30. So, therefore, it will be 1000 divisible by 30 divided by 30 floor of that which is 33 then I have got a 1, a 3, a 4 which is uh, 1000 divided by 70 which is equal to 14 and we have a 1, a 2, a 4 which is 1000 divided by 42 which is equal to 23 and finally, a 1 uh, this will be a 2, a 3 and a 4 
which is floor of 1000 divided by 1, 105. So it is 9. And the last one, taking 4 at a time, is, and we can check that this is just the number 4. Now, if we remember all, all these things, then we can see that the cardinality of A 1 complement intersection A 2 complement intersection A 3 complement intersection A 4 complement is the cardinality of E u this one which is of course 1000 minus cardinality of a1 500 plus cardinality of a2 333 plus 200 plus 142 these are the cardinalities of a1, a2, a3, a4. Then subtract from this one the cardinality of a1 intersection a2, which is 166 minus 100 minus 71 minus 66 minus 47 minus 28, and then we start adding, we add 33, add 14, add 9, so and add 23 and then again subtract the last expression that is 4 if I do this, then the number that I get is 222 and this is the number of integers between 1 and 1000 which are not divisible by 2, 3, 5 and 7. Thus, in this example, we see how we are using the principle of inclusion and exclusion to count uh, some number of some things. We move on to more serious examples. And this example involves Euler phi function. Now, the first question is what is Euler phi function? For that, first of all, we have to know what do we mean when we say that two positive integers are relatively prime to one another. Let me write the definition first. Two positive integers are 
said to be relatively try if the number 1 is the only common divisor that they have. Now, suppose n is a positive integer, phi n is defined as the number of positive integers greater than or equal to one and less than or equal to n which are relatively prime to n. So, in simple words we take a positive integer n and we count the number of positive integers between 1 and n which are relatively prime to n and this number is called the phi n. Now, what we are interested uh, here is to get a get an expression of phi n, which uh, does not seem to be very easy. If we start uh, checking some small examples, then we see that phi 1 is of course, 1, phi 2 is also 1, phi 3 is 2, phi 4 is also 2, because the positive integers less than 4 is 1, 2, 3 and 4. Here 1 is of course, relatively prime to 4, 2 is not relatively prime to 4 and 3 is relatively prime to 4 and of course, 4 is not relatively prime to 4. So, we have got we say phi 4 is 2, then phi 5 is 4 and so on. So, as such there is no uh, direct uh, um, pattern that uh, that is obvious. So, we have to find out uh, an expression of uh, phi if at all it exists. 
incidentally this function is called the Euler's phi function. Now, suppose P 1, P 2 up to P k are the distinct prime divisors of n. We consider the universal set 1, 2 up to n and denoted by u. We also consider a set like this A sub i which is the subset of u consisting of those integers divisible by p i. So, we are looking for integers which are in u and not divisible by any of the p i's. Therefore, phi n is equal to cardinality of a 1 complement intersection a 2 complement intersection and continued in this way up to a k complement we can manipulate and get this equal to u minus cardinality of u minus a 1 union a 2 union and so on up to a k. Now, again we see that the expression that we are getting is almost similar to the expression that we got in the last example. Only thing is that we have to know how to count the cardinalities of a i and intersections of different a i's. We base this on an observation if b divides n then there are n by d multiples of g in u. This can be verified and I leave it as an exercise, but if we take it to be true which of course, we can verify then we will get a i equal to n by p i a i intersection a j where i is not equal to j equal to n divided by p i p j and 
proceeding in this this way finally we will get a 1 intersection and so on up to intersection a k is equal to n divided by p 1 dot 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 p k and therefore, considering all this we will get phi n equal to n which is the cardinality of u and then minus sigma i equal to 1 to k n by p i this is essentially sigma i equal to 1 to k cardinality of a i and I put a minus over here to obtain i equal to 1 to k n uh, uh, I have to put i equal to 1 to k and j also equal to 1 to k with a con condition that i is always less than j. So, this is p i p j and we will proceed in this way to ultimately the last expression this is the cardinality of a i uh, I am sorry a 1 intersection and up to a k and this intermediate second uh, entry is essentially i less than j intersection a, a i intersection a j cardinality. Thus, we have basically used the pigeon hole uh, I am sorry we have basically used the principle of inclusion exclusion uh, in the, the last part of the right hand side uh, to, to obtain an expression. Now, we can process this further and write n e minus sigma i equal to 1 to k n p i plus sigma i less than j n p i into p j minus and so on at the end uh, it is minus 1 raised to the power k n p 1 up to p k. And the careful analysis shows that this is equal to n into 1 minus 1 by p 1. 1 minus 1 by p 2 and so on up to n into 1 minus 1 by p k and thus finally, we have got an expression for phi n which is phi n equal to n into 1 minus 1 by p 1, 1 minus 1 by p 2 and so on up to 1 minus 1 by p k where n is equal to p 1 uh, raised to the power alpha 1 p 2 raised to the power alpha 2 and p k raised to the power alpha k where alpha i's are greater than or equal to 1 and p i's are distinct prime numbers. Euler's phi function plays an important role in number theory and many other applications of number theory. This example 
gives us a uh, gives us a an instance where the principle of inclusion and exclusion gets used in finding out a, a very fundamental uh, function a of number theory, which is the Euler phi function. Next, we will talk about counting certain kind of permutations by using uh, the principle of inclusion and exclusion. Now, these permutations that we are going to study are called derangements. Let me start by defining derangements among the permutations of the numbers from 1 to n, there are some permutations in which none of the n integers appears in its natural place. Now, these permutations are called derangements. Now, what we would like to do is to count the number of derangements of uh, uh, of n n o n numbers from 1 to n suppose dn is equal to the total number of derangements on the set 1 to up to n. Now, just like the previous examples, we are going to define some sets. So, in general, we define A i equal to the set of all the permutations on 1 to up to n, which keeps the ith element namely i 
in its natural place. And of course, I will move i from 1 to up to n. Let u denote the set of all permutations on 1 2 up to n. Just to recall that this means that u is the set of all 1 to 1 on to functions from 1 to up to n to 1 to up to n. Now, from the discussion that we have done before, it is now clear that uh, d n is equal to a 1 complement intersection a 2 complement intersection and so on up to a n complement and which again in exactly similar way as before can be written as cardinality of u minus cardinality of a 1 union a 2 union and so on up to a n. We know that the cardinality of u is factorial n and therefore, we have to just find the cardinality of a 1 union and so on up to cardinality of a n. For that, we will start checking the cardinality of a 1. which is factorial n minus 1. The reason is that when I am counting the number of permutations or the number of arrangements that I can make out of elements from 1 to n, where first element is in the first position, then I can move around the other n minus 1 elements in in any way I like. So, I can do that in factorial n minus 1 ways. Therefore, cardinality of a 1 is factorial n and the question is that uh, 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 how many a i's are there? There are n choose 1 many that is n many a i's. So, uh, cardinality of a 2 is going to be also n minus 1 and so on up to cardinality of a n is equal to n choose n minus 1. Therefore, if I am considering the cardinality of the union a 1 union a n the first term which is sigma i equal to 1 to n cardinality of a i this will be n choose 1 n minus 1 that is n into cardinality of n minus 1 because all the a i s have the same cardinality. The second term is going to be i less than j a i intersection a j. Now, the question is that how many times I can choose these 
two distinct AIs from n distinct AI. So, that number of times is n choose 2, then the quest question is that what is the cardinality of AI intersection AJ and that happens to be n minus 2 factorial because after all I am fixing the ith element to the ith place and jth element to the jth place. So, I have got n minus 2 many elements left which we can move around anywhere like. Therefore, we will get uh, n choose 2 into factorial n minus 2 and then further on I will have n choose 3 factorial n minus 3 and so on and at the very end I am going to get minus 1 raised to the power n minus 1 into n choose n of 1. Now, if we go back to the expression that we started writing of d n, we wrote that d n is equal to cardinality of u minus the cardinality of a 1 union and so on up to a n, which means that d n is factorial n minus n choose 1 factorial n minus 1 minus n choose 2 factorial n minus 2 plus n choose 3 factorial n minus 3 plus which is equal to factorial n minus n choose 1 And if we process it further, we will get the final result as factorial n into within bracket 1 minus 1 choose 1 plus 1 choose factorial 2 minus 1 choose uh, sorry. 1 minus 1 by factorial 1 plus 1 by factorial 2, 1 by factorial 3 and so on and at the end we will have minus 1 to the power n factorial n. This is the final result for the number of derangements that we have on n positive integers from 1 to n. In this lecture, we have studied three examples in which principle of inclusion and exclusion has been used to uh, solve certain uh, counting problems and some of these problems are very fundamental to combinatorics and number theory. Uh, we uh, uh, stop the lecture now, thank you.